Talking with the experts. Discover how Brian Clayton built Greenpal, a tech company without a tech background, in episode 520. You don't have to know how to write software and code to, to leverage uh, off the shelf technology in, the, in your business. So I think a lot of people um, get analysis paralysis and, and, uh, and, and the paradox of choice when it comes to, to Im- implementing these things into their business. And so they don't know where to even start. And, and, and the thing is start really, really, really small. So um, if it, let's just say in your business, you uh, you've got uh, 20 different processes and you're doing them all by hand or spreadsheet or pen and pad or whatever, just pick one. Pick one and and look for uh, SaaS solutions, software as a service that you pay a monthly fee for to implement into your business. And so, one of these could be uh, employee training. A lot of a lot of times, employee training in most small businesses is is just on the job, ad hoc, trial by error, which means customers are getting bad experiences with an untrained employee. Talking with the experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts, where we believe that success is a journey, and every journey is easier with help from friends. That's why we bring you top-notch experts and real business heroes eager to share their lessons from the road to success. We delve into new topics each week, effective marketing strategies, innovative problem solving, financial planning, and team building. We tackle everything you need to know to grow your business and keep it thriving. Whether you dream about launching your first startup or a business veteran looking to shake things up, we've got you covered. With each episode, you'll gain knowledge, boost your confidence, and be inspired to take action. So, grab a coffee, make yourself comfortable, and join our exciting journey. You're not alone in this. We're here, guiding you, cheering for you, and celebrating each milestone. Let's turn your business dreams into reality, starting today. Here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is all about business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. Today, my guest is Brian Clayton. We're going to be talking about things all tech. So tech knowledge that you don't need to have when you start your business, but how you can um, learn that and develop it as time goes on. Now, Brian uh, is the CEO of a landscaping business, and he's a a visionary and a groundbreaker. He's the mastermind behind GreenPow, an innovative online marketing dubbed the Uber for Lawn Care by Entrepreneur Magazine. He's revolutionizing the way homeowners connect with uh, local lawn care pros. He's boasting over 200,000 active users and Green Pal pulses with thousands of transactions daily, a testament to Brian's knack for understanding market needs. Welcome, Brian. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm looking forward to learning about all the tech that I don't need to know about. <laughs> well, Rose, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me on your show. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm CEO of Green Pal. It's, a, it's an app that works like Uber, but for lawn care. So anybody that needs to get a lawn mowing service rather than calling around all over the place, you can just push a button and get someone to come out and mow your yard. Wonderful. So well, how did you come up with this idea? Yeah, I think when you're bringing a new uh, idea to the marketplace, you're starting a new app from scratch. I think sometimes authenticity can be a competitive advantage. And so my first business was a landscaping company. I started mowing grass in high school as a way to make extra cash and stuck with that little lawn mowing business for over 10 years, right? About 15 years actually. And, and uh, built it up to about 150 employees, eight figures a year in revenue, and then sold it. It was acquired by a national company in the United States. And after that, I took some time off and I thought, well, what am I going to do with my life now? And I saw what Uber was doing for ride sharing. And I thought to myself, well, somebody is going to build a marketplace that makes lawn mowing work as smooth as, as ordering an Uber. And why can't that be me? And so I started uh, working on the idea, started uh, learning how to code, learning how to build software, learning how to design screens and interfaces and recruited two co-founders and 
we uh, never looked back. And now Green Pal is a 10-year overnight success. We, we have around 300,000 people using the app to get lawn mowing done on a weekly basis. Wow. So I guess, um, you know, how do we identify or how does a, a business owner identify the gap in the market? Yeah, a lot of times it, it, it can come from just putting in the reps, running a business and experiencing a business, experiencing what is wrong with the customer experience and experiencing what's breaking down and and where technology can can help improve that. And you still see it every day that there's businesses operating like they're in the 90s, even though it's 2023. You know, I, heck, I went to the dentist the other day and the first thing they did was they gave me a stack of a clipboard with a stack of papers. To, with a ballpoint pen I had to fill out, you know, they should know all that about me. They, that, that should already be handled and all that should be digital and should be abstracted away uh, and, and just, just magical. And, and so even to this day, there's, there's many businesses that still operate very clunky. And if you can look at, okay, well, well how can I use technology? I, I saw this one company do this one thing and and I can actually do that in my business and, and I can make this part of my business automated. And, and uh, it could be something as simple as what is the first touch point when somebody first does business with you? You know, when they call some, when they call the, the front office, do they get picked? Does somebody pick up the phone or do they have to leave a voicemail? <laughs> Heaven forbid, you know, there's technology that can solve that. And so uh, every single tech touch point that the customer goes through, you can figure out a piece of technology that you can buy off the shelf to, to automate and streamline and, and make, make your, make your business or service more like Uber uh, or more like Amazon. Um, you know, we all compete with Amazon in a way because Amazon has, has indoctrinated the consumer to expect magic when they push a button, it show the product shows up in a day or two. So, so look for ways to close the gap between your business and, and, and magic and what Amazon or Uber delivers. Yeah. I, um, I agree with you about the dentist or you even go to the doctor and, you know, every time you go there, they ask you to fill out a form. And I think that's absolutely ridiculous. You know, yeah, they should every have time all that on it, they should have all of that on file. And if something changes, then I would let them know. Or why, when I check into a hotel, uh, does it take 15 minutes and they've got to take a photocopy of my ID and I got to fill out four or five different forms, fill out my damn address on it. And I got to sign three things. And it's like, all of that should be handled. You, you already know all of this about me. I'm your customer. I should just show up. I should get a key and it should take less than a minute. So there's, there's many businesses that operate the same today as they did in, in 1990. And, uh, and, and I think eventually every business will have to think like a tech business. doesn't matter if you run a home cleaning service or a construction company, or if you run a dry cleaning service, every, every business is going to be a tech business eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Now, you know, there's always that, um, you know, the lean approach, a lot of businesses are, are adopting the lean, um, uh, way of doing things and you know building their minimum viable product so how can we um do that that caters to both vendors and to uh clients yeah so so the the whole idea behind building a lean product and taking the lean approach is is uh is figuring out a way to reduce this idea you have into an experiment almost and so with GreenPal, we did this uh, before we built the whole the whole app, before we built the whole marketplace, we hand cranked everything behind the scenes. And so somebody would sign up and they would hire a lawn mowing service. Then we would we would call the lawn care service. We would schedule them. We would pay them. We would we would we would manually do everything. And and seemingly to the customer, it seemed like magic. They just pushed a button and somebody showed up, uh, whereas it was us behind the scenes like like kind of like the wizard of Oz hand cranking along all of this stuff to make it make magic, uh, uh, happen almost. And then as time went on, we, we built the systems, we built the processes, we built the technology to make all those things happen automatically. And so that's basically what, what lean is, 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 is figuring out a way to ease your way into uh, a product or service and, and run little experiments to figure out how to build them, but also figure out if it's something that people want. Uh, before we before we went off and, and spent a decade building this platform, 
we were able to validate that people wanted it, pe- that people would would use the service to to hire a lawn mowing service. So so if the the, the more of these little experiments you can do um, to to validate the idea and to kind of formulate your approach on how you're going to build it, the better. Otherwise, you can waste five or ten years building something that nobody wants. Mm. Yeah, the lean approach, some you know, is is helpful, but a lot of people don't understand, you know, how how to go about doing that. Can you just explain the steps in a in the lean approach? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll tell a story. So I, I do coaching and mentoring as a hobby for for budding uh, tech startup uh, entrepreneurs, particularly ones that are building marketplaces, because I know a little bit about that. And I, I've got a buddy, he, and, he, and he came to me with an idea, and he said, um, I want to build a marketplace. Uh, I, I have a really good idea. He said, I, I just built a home, and I was able to save a lot of money uh, sourcing weird uh, excess inventory from supply houses around me. A, a, a door, a special door that somebody ordered one time that was like $10,000 he was able to get for 500 bucks. Um, you know, a, a, a set of a, a three or four windows that didn't quite match the other ones, but they went on the back and these ones went on the front. So it worked out. And so he was able to save tens of thousands of dollars doing this. And it was like, it was elbow grease. He had to go to these supply houses and find these hidden gems. And, and he, and he said, man, the thing I saw was that all of these supply yards have tons of this stuff in the back and it's dead, it's dead inventory. They can't do anything with it. And, and uh, I think I could build a marketplace that would enable consumers, home builders, home buyers, homeowners to buy that stuff like you can on Amazon. And I said, yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. He said, so I'm going to start coding up the website. I'm going to start coding up the technology. I'm going to build the inventory system. I'm going to build the homepage. I'm going to build the landing pages. I'm going to build the ordering system. I'm going to build the review system. So because, you know, if you buy from this supply house, you want to review them. I'm, I'm going to build uh, the pricing algorithm and all of these things. So it works great. And I said, great ideas. But please, before you do any of that, just do this one thing. Uh, that one supply house you were talking about, uh, just go offer to sit in their back office for a week and tell them, I want to sell as much of this crap as I can, and I'll split all of the proceeds with you. We'll, we'll split it 50-50 or, or 70-30 or whatever. And then just manually sell that crap through offer up, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, you name it. Just any means necessary, sell, sell it through. And he said, man, why am I going to do that? That's a waste of my time. I got to get building this technology. I already have it scoped out. I know everything I got to build. Why am I going to waste time selling all this crap? And I said, just, just, just trust me on this. Do it. He's like, okay. So the next day he called, he, uh, two days goes by, he calls me and, and I, and I was like, hell, Hey, how's it going, man? How much, how much have you sold? He goes, there's no business here. You, you can't sell this stuff. It's too weird. It's too messed up. People don't know what they're buying. Uh, th- th- there is no business here. And, and I'm like, see, aren't you glad you didn't spend a year coding up a, a, an entire website to help sell that crap when you can't even sell it manually? That's lean. Lean is taking it down to the simplest thing that you can do at, to validate the idea, to validate the, the, the process, to validate what the next steps of the game are. And, uh, and that, that saved him a year of wasted time building a website that nobody wanted. Mm, yeah, a, a great learning experience, I, I would think so. Yeah, it hasn't wasted time and money. Exactly. And so, uh, and so the more you can do that, the more you can fire bullets, then cannonballs, uh, mm-hmm. or another way to say it is test, then invest, the better. Um, and 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 a, the, the the Bible about this is is the Lean Startup by Eric Ries. There's another really good book that was his uh, mentor, a guy by the name of Steve Blank, wrote a book called The Startup Owner's Manual. And those two books are about about lean methodology with with respect to technology. Mm. Uh, you know, a lot of us um, aren't tech savvy. Uh, so how do we go about navigating the, the tech world without a technical background? Well, you don't have to know how to write software and code to, to leverage uh, off-the-shelf technology in, the, in your business. So I think a lot of people um, get analysis paralysis and, and, uh, and, and the paradox of choice when it comes to, to implementing these things into their business. And so they don't know 
where to even start. And, and, and the thing is start really, really, really small. So, um, if let's just say in your business, you, uh, you've got uh, 20 different processes and you're doing them all by hand or spreadsheet or pen and pad or whatever, just pick one, pick one and, and look for uh, SaaS solutions, software as a service that you pay a monthly fee for to implement into your business. And so one of these could be, uh, employee training. A lot of a lot of times, employee training in most small businesses is is just on the job, ad hoc, trial by error, which means customers are getting bad experiences with an untrained employee. It is uh, it is on the job training, and there really is no training system. Well, there's a there's a dozen different training platforms that you can build a training system, and you can spend a, a month or two months building the best. Uh, training system in, in your industry. Yeah. It, you know, from, from, for me, it was lawn care university. We, we, we built a training system that, that, that trained a technician on, on how to identify plants and how to operate equipment and how to identify pests and things like that in, in, in six days, what normally took six months. And, and we did it by, by, by leveraging an off the shelf uh, employee training solution for that. And we invested in that and created the course material and that that helped automate one little piece of the business, and then we started to focus on the next piece and then the next piece. So you don't have to build this stuff from scratch. Twenty years ago, you did. Hell, even ten years ago, most of it you had to build yourself. These days, there there is an off the shelf solution that you can buy and bolt on to your business, and uh, and 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 build a actual business, not just be self employed. Because a lot of times, if you don't implement these systems and implement technology you stay stuck being self-employed. You don't actually build a business. Mm. Yeah, that's a, a good um, a good way of looking at it. I mean, you're right. There are there is so much software out there at the moment that, you know, you, you're spoiled for choice, really. And, and uh, yeah. you know, to try and, you know, I've been looking for training software to, to uh, upload my courses to, to my website. But quite honestly, I could just do it with Google um, do, do Google Drive and um, just have videos on there. I don't need all that really expensive stuff. Absolutely. And, and and that's a great point. Um, a lot of times simpler is better. And you don't have to overcomplicate these things and just start with the simplest solution. And then and then and so the, here we go back to lean. Uh, you, you rather than implementing a whole full blown uh, system, just implement a Google Drive and a, and a link. And then study and monitor the activity. Are, are people using it? What are people telling you? Are they like, hey, you know, your Google link is this, is this or this? You know, it'd be awesome if it did this. And you're like, huh, maybe I need a solution for that. So, so uh, you, you implement the simplest solution. Then you let the user feedback, the customer feedback, dictate what your next steps are. That's that's lean methodology right there. Absolutely, yeah. I I I, I do practice it a lot in some ways, and then other ways I get a bit grand and and you know think oh you know the next new buzz thing that's out on the market because i i like to be an early adopter of new technology and yeah i think oh yeah i'll just try that and then it ends up costing me a fortune and i don't use it as often as i think i will <laughs> yeah the, the, when it comes to trying these things out it, it, it is test and then invest once you figure out that it's not for you cut it loose and move on to the next thing. If not, next thing you know, you've got 20 or 30 of these monthly bills for something you're not using. I've been Absolutely. Yep. Yep. I've found that <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> Thing, I wonder where's my money going. <laughs> so it's yeah, all right, these yeah. things that I'm not using. <laughs> these monthly subscriptions that we don't need anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, you know, being adaptable in business and scaling and, and evolving, you know, your business is, sometimes not an easy journey so how can um you know how did you through green pal evolve from you know something quite simple to what it is today you just really got to take it one, one level at a time a lot a lot of times we we get uh, overwhelmed with big plans and big goals and and big big visions for the future of what things could look like and what they could be and and it really is like a video game almost where there's 10 levels uh, metaphorically and, and, and you don't need to worry about Bowser until you get to level 10, really just work one level at a time and set little small goals. And then, and then just knock them down and celebrate them like they're big goals. That's how we did it. We, we set a goal for 100 customers 
uh, to use the the platform in in a given week, and it took us two years to get it. Uh, and and when we got to that milestone, we celebrated it like it was a million. And then we thought, okay, now we got a hundred. We got to get to a thousand. How are we going to get to a thousand? Well, the you know these these hand hand to hand combat types of guerrilla marketing that we were doing to get to the hundred aren't going to work to get to a thousand. So we got to rethink our strategy. We got to look at some more self serve options. We got to look at investing in SEO and things of that sort. And then we got to a thousand. That took another two years. And then and then. From a thousand to five thousand, what do we got to do to get to five thousand now? And it's and it's a whole nother set of things. the The thing about business is, you you get um, seduced by this idea that if I just solve this problem, business will be easy, and if I can just make this key higher, my my business will take off, and 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 I'll have a lot of my problems solved. And the thing about business is, just because you solve a set of problems means you get to solve more problems. That's all it means. The, the problems never go away. The challenges never go away. So so just embrace that and tr- and take it one level at a time and and map that back to a set of milestones for your business. Could be sales, could be customers, whatever it is. And just focus all of your intensity to get in from one level to the next. And don't worry about any level other than the one you're on. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That um, and you need to be adaptable. You need to um, you know. I mean, some sometimes it's trial and error. You you need to you know trial these things and before you, but trial them before you before you buy them. Don't. Yeah, don't, yeah totally. <laughs> don't go <laughs> totally. full on and buy a subscription if you're not going to use it. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> so I guess um, you know, you started off, uh, you know very, very small. And, you know, you've just explained you went from a hundred users to like over 3000 now. My God, that's, that's a, a, a huge jump in, in uh, subscribers, but you know, how, how can the person who's not that, I mean, I know you've explained about, you know, starting small and doing it, but what about hiring specialists, you know, behind the scenes? Yeah. Um. So if, if you want to build a tech company, like what we've built, um, you're going to have to learn some tech. You're going to have to learn how to write software. You're going to have to learn how to code. Uh, I don't, I don't know of any other way to do it. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and we get about a thousand musicians move here every month wanting to be the next big country music star, the next Keith, Keith Urban. There you go. Australian guy. And, uh, and, and the reality is, is that um, it would be like one of them saying, I want to be the next Keith Urban but I don't know how to play the guitar or I can't sing. And so that's what wanting to start a tech company without knowing any sort of uh, uh, software acumen or, or the ability to build software. Um, that's kind of what that is like. It's kind of like wanting to be a musician and saying, I, ha- I have an idea for a song. I just need to find a musician to, to uh, write it for me and perform it for me. You know, it's like, you're not, in, you're, you gotta be a musician. Well, if you want to be a tech startup, you, you gotta you gotta learn how to build software. So that that's that's really the answer there. But it doesn't mean that if you own a traditional business, so say you own a home remodeling company, or you own a bakery, or you own a home cleaning service, it doesn't matter what type of business you own, you can modernize and implement tech like we talked about off the shelf in the business and close the gap between where it's at today and what a fully automated technology driven business looks like. So so don't let the fact that you've never written a line of software code before stop you from doing that. And that's what that's what it does. It's most people it's like, "Well, I'm not a software engineer, therefore I'm going to keep doing this with with Excel and and pen and pad." And that's a good way to go out of business. You really got to embrace this stuff. It doesn't mean you got to learn learn how to build software, uh, but it does mean you got you kind of need to like uh, get your hands dirty a little bit and test some things out. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that is a great philosophy to have. Try try it first before you buy it. Yeah, totally. And with software, you can you can try it for a month or what most things have of a free trial and and uh, and don't let that stop you. And just try try it out. If it's not working, if it's not a good fit, move on to the next one. There's several good websites like Capterra.com, C-A-P-T-E-R-A.com which review software 
and and tell you, okay, here's the five best payroll solutions for your small business. Here's the five best uh, scheduling uh, solutions for your yoga studio. Here's the five best route management systems for your home cleaning business. Here's the five best in- inventory management so- solutions for your bakery. Just just g- get on there and 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 check out what's available and try this stuff out. Hmm. Yeah. Good. Good. Good advice. Brian, where can people find you if they want to know more about um, what you can offer or uh, indeed just have a chat and, and pick your brain a bit? Yeah, sure. Uh, if you're in, if you're in the United States, just go to greenpod.com and you can sign up for a lawn mowing service there. Anybody wants to hit me up, find me on LinkedIn or Instagram. Uh, my handle on Instagram is Brian M. Clayton. Lovely. And if you were to offer some advice to anyone, doesn't matter what type of business they have, it can be, you know, um, business advice or personal advice, what would it be? I think in business, um, follow your passion is bad advice. Uh, I I get a lot of people say, oh, well, I hate this and I I don't want to do that. I'm not passionate about that. Listen, I've been in landscaping for 22 years. I ran a landscaping business, sold it. Now I'm running uh, uh, the Uber for lawn care green pal. I hate cutting grass. I hate the smell of 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 fresh cut grass. I hate I I I don't want to ever mow another yard ever again. So I, I don't love the lawn mowing business. Um so follow your passions, bad advice. You, you don't have to do what you love, but you gotta find the love in what you're doing. And so for me, I love being a part of a project that's bigger than me. I love building a platform that helps small business owners in the landscaping industry prosper and double and triple their business. I love having a team of smart people working on uh, a, a common goal. So find the love in what you're doing, but you don't have to follow your passion and then do what you love. Mm, yeah, I think that's really great advice too. I think uh, people say follow your passion, but they can often lead down a dark hole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's very, very hard to make money on your passion. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I've, I've learned that from experience. Brian, it's, been an absolute pleasure thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today and i look forward to talking to you again very soon thanks for having me on i enjoyed it bye-bye for now you've been listening to talking with the experts hosted by rose davidson make sure you have a look at our back catalog over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode we look forward to your company next time Talking with the experts.